Welcome to this week's version of Why I Serve, the show we're going to explain the military, and we're going to talk about why do people serve in the United States military. And uh, tonight we have a guest, and his name is Perry Baltimore, and Kat is going to introduce him. Welcome everybody to the show tonight. It's going to be full of people and animals. So whatever you do, don't go anywhere. Our guest tonight is Colonel Perry F. Baltimore III. He is a graduate of West Point and is one of the founders of the Marshall Legacy Institute. In 1998, after 27 years of service in the United States Army, he became MLI's president and the executive director. So, um, Colonel Baltimore, during your military experience, did you witness firsthand the human condition throughout the world? And, and how can you explain that to us? You know, Kat, you kind of froze on that. Can you repeat that question, please? Sure. Um, during your military service, uh, you witnessed firsthand the human condition throughout much of the developing world, including Afghanistan, Angola, Iraq, Rwanda, Somalia, and Vietnam. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? Yes, Kat. Uh, 27 years went by uh, very quickly uh, with uh, my family moving 18 times over that 27 years and many of the hardship places that you mentioned made it a bit of a hardship for the family. But I'll tell you, seeing, uh, uh, seeing and witnessing uh, firsthand uh, the way people live, the way people uh, deal with uh, what life presents them, different call situations, uh, made it very interesting for me, made it very interesting for my soldiers, and uh, incredibly, uh, 27 years went by pretty quickly. You know, after graduating from the military academy, you have five years in which you have to serve. Those five started in Vietnam, uh, where uh, young men didn't want to be there, but we all had something in common. We all jumped out of airplanes, we all wore the, uh, uh, we all wore the, uh, the jump wings, and you know what? Those guys worked hard to take care of one another, and uh, they thrived on good leadership. And I was blessed to have good people to work with. And from Vietnam, it went to Germany, and ultimately it went to Panama, then ultimately it went to Kuwait, and many of the other places that you mentioned. And at all times, exciting places, interesting work, but mostly really good people to work with, people who cared about each other, cared about uh, what they did, cared about their country, and worked together to uh, protect one another. You know, Lori, it's amazing. He went to all the places I went to, and like my dad, he was jumping out of airplanes too. <laughs> That's right. Kat's uh, dad was Special Forces. Awesome. And she grew up in Germany, and he was uh, uh, a lifetime uh, career officer too, a uh, uh, master sergeant. and uh, Sergeant Major. Sorry, Sergeant Major, and he did a lot of great things. Awesome. Well, thank so, your thank your father uh, thank your father for his service. Oh, well, I'm grew, sure he's listening. <laughs> I grew up deep in the mountains of West Virginia, and uh, you know uh, what was really important was faith, family, and country. I mean, every house flew the flew the flew the U.S. flag. Uh, every house had a picture of JFK hanging on the wall. And when it came time to graduate from high school, uh, you know, you would go to work in the coal mines, maybe you would go work in the tourist industry, or you couldn't find a job. So most of the kids, uh, most of the boys graduating from high school chose to go to the military. It was a tradition in the little town that I grew up in. I mean, the 4th of July was the big, that mm -hmm. was the big uh, holiday yeah. of the year. Uh, it, there's only 750 people lived in the small town that I came from. But the hero, the Grand Marshal who uh, rode in the lead fire truck in the 4th of uh, July parade was the youngest recruit, the bareheaded recruit, no, no medals on his <laughs> chest, but uh, the bareheaded recruit to come home uh, uh, for the holiday. And uh, he, was the, he was the Grand Marshal. People believed in country. They believed in flying the flag. 
Uh, I had six uncles, all of whom served in the military. So I knew at a very young age that I, uh, that I wanted to serve. Ultimately got into the military, I got into the military, served at the, uh, the academy, uh, volunteered to jump out of planes, volunteered to go to Vietnam. And then it was association <laughs> with the people with whom I worked, people who cared, people who were dedicated, people that worked hard to take care of one another. That's what ultimately led me to stick around for 27 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And why did you want to be part of the Marshall Legacy Institute? It was something new and exciting, and that there really was an opportunity to work with other re retired uh, military people, many of whom who we shared common values. We liked international travel. And uh, back to the first question, some of those places in which I had the opportunity to serve we knew how people suffered in going through those uh, conflict-torn countries and uh, uh, the kinds of things uh, that would really, uh, that really might help them on their feet. This was the idea of the Marshall Legacy Institute, founded by General Sullivan, to extend the vision, to extend the legacy of George Marshall, to help the people help them in the experience that uh, that uh, I was 27 years and moving 18 times and seeing a lot of different places and how people live. Being with the Marshall Legacy Institute provided an opportunity uh, to continue a lot of that kind of work, perhaps not in uniform. One of the great thrills was going back to Vietnam. And this time, instead of wearing the, the Kevlar, instead of wearing the steel pot to go with the baseball cap, <laughs> to help uh, clean up some of the unexploded ordnance in the landmines that perhaps I and others like me uh, left behind to help make those areas uh, much safer for the people. It's hard to believe, but this is our 20th year. And when General Sullivan started this outfit 20 years ago and asked me to join him, I said, all right, sir, I'll do it for a year. Well, here we are 20 <laughs> years later, and it's, uh, it's, it's been an exciting run. Laurie, I heard you have a, a four-legged hero down by your feet. Can you tell us a little bit about him really quick? Yes, that's Dino. And if you want to show them Dino, Dino, Dino's you retired. Can, come here, buddy. Come on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to see Dino. If, if maybe we could tilt the camera there just uh, the slightest Yeah, you can tilt it down a little bit. I, I want to see this hero. Yeah, we could uh, we could try to bring it down a little over. bit, a little more, a little more. The camera there, buddy. Pretty. Dino. Oh, Dino. Dino. He's you a just Belgian know my heart. Dino, yeah, is a Belgian shepherd, a Belgian Malinois, and a real hero, uh, we might say. We sent Dino to Afghanistan in 2007. He went there and uh, worked for eight years. Uh, with an organization called DAFA, the Mining Organization Agency for Afghanistan. And he's credited with searching out, sniffing 1.6 million square meters of land to make it safe uh, for the kids to go to school and for people to, uh, people to work and people to play. Dino is one of 218 dogs that we've sent to uh, a dozen conflict-torn, war-torn countries uh, around the world. And uh, Dino's 11 and a half years old now. He retired just about two years ago. Most of our dogs work at least six uh, to eight years, sometime a little bit longer. Uh, and when they retire, they usually stay with their handlers. But it was difficult for Dino's handler to uh, take care of him in, in Afghanistan, given the security situation. And uh, the handlers didn't make a lot of money. And they really didn't have access to good uh, veterinary care and, and so forth when they no longer had a working dog. So I personally asked the hander if it would be okay if uh, my wife and I uh, brought Dino back to the United States. So on the 13th of March last year, after working in Afghanistan for eight years, we brought Dino home and he has brought a lot of joy, he's brought a lot of hair into our home. <laughs> we work every day with Perry. He's a, he's a regular in the office. Oh, every nice. time you come in, you'll see Dino. He, he's, he, he's good company. He, he, he loves the ladies and uh, he, he smiles at the ladies and he barks at the men when they come <laughs> in the office. So he has a bit of the Dino Martin in him, huh? Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. He does. Now, Perry, you have another story about uh, Safa, this little girl who was a, a victim of a mine explosion and lost her leg. 
and uh, tell us how you found out about her. Uh, I, I will, you know, and you mentioned a little while ago, well, about service in the Marshall Legacy Institute. And we work with a lot of kids, kids in the United States and, and kids who suffer from in in country. And we work with dogs. And if you work with dogs during the majority of your work day, that's pretty good. And mm -hmm. it's a smile. named Safa. Uh, Safa is uh, now a, uh, I think, probably 12-year-old girl uh, in Afghanistan. She lives out near the, the, uh, the city of Jalalabad along the Pakistani border, along the Afghan-Pakistani border. When she was only six years old, uh, Lori, she was visiting her grandmother in a place called Lagman, in Lagman province. It was getting to be about lunchtime, and uh, the grandmother said, uh, Safa, how about you and your sister going out and get some veggies that we can enjoy for lunch? So Safa and her sister went out, and uh, after just a short while, they were coming home, and Safa had a handful of vegetables in her arms when, sadly, her foot found a landmine. She stepped on the mine. The mine exploded. Of course, the veggies went flying all over, and uh, young Safa was uh, was absolutely devastated, as was her sister. But her sister was able to run for help. They were able to get Safa uh, to a medical clinic after some time. And Safa just knew that her life was ruined. I mean, life is pretty tough in Afghanistan mm -hmm. for any oh, yeah. woman and mm -hmm. for any young girl. And especially now, you have a young girl without a leg. And would you believe through our CHAMPS or Children's Program called uh, CHAMPS Stands for Children Against Minds Program, a group of children in uh, Fairfield County in Southern Connecticut, Grace Christian School, learned about Safa, learned about her suffering and her loss of leg. They managed to get her a leg. And Safa was so happy to get this leg. And the children who formed this Mine Action Club and here's a video of her here, here, running around in, with her new leg. In the video, you see her running. The children in Grace Christian School provided that leg. And, you know, the children outgrow their legs pretty quickly, maybe in one, maybe eight months, maybe one year. Safa is now on her sixth leg provided by the children at, at Grace Christian School who link the, the children in that school linked by high-speed uh, high internet with children in Roma, uh, Roshan School in Logman Province, and they get to visit with Safa from time to time. They see the young child that they essentially adopted and got her a leg, and the story gets even better. Not only does Safa have a leg, was enjoying running and playing his father, but her uncle. And the uncle, after Safa got her first leg, said, you know, if those American children care enough about you, they don't even know you, but if they care enough about you to raise money to help you to give you a leg, maybe we should care enough about you to send you to school. Would you oh, I love that. Safa mm -hmm. is in the sixth grade now. And every girl in her family goes to school now because of those young children, uh, the CHAMPS program, and those young children at Grace Christian School. Safa what a is beautiful one story. of hundreds of children around the world now who are living better lives, happier lives, with dignity. Although they may have lost limbs, and they may have suffered uh, injuries because of landmines, they're doing much better now because of our CHAMPS program and because of American children who care about others mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful story, Lori. That is just amazing. And she looked like such, she looked like any other child just running around. She looked so happy. The light on her face. I mean, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see how children help children. Children from other schools can get in touch with children who have real needs and they can do something about it. And I mm -hmm. think that puts the power in their hands and they can really see they're making a difference. 
And that's what the CHAMPS program does. So if you're interested in the CHAMPS program, if you're a teacher or if you're a student, please get in touch with the Marshall Legacy Institute. It's marshall-legacy.org, O-R-G. And if you just want to call on the phone, what's the phone number to call you guys? 703-9200. That's great. So if you're interested in doing I'm that, sorry, getting involved with the Lori, camp. Lori, he kind of broke up. Was it 703? What was? 703-243-9200. Okay, great. Thank you. So if you're interested in that, please get in touch. And if you want to donate to the Marshall Legacy Institute, it's marshall-legacy.org. And for a $10 donation, they'll give you the little uh, baseball cards that we've seen before. Here's one. I don't know if I can show it to you, but here's one of Dino. Oh, uh, but there, he's so uh, handsome. <laughs> there are over 200 dogs that the Marshall Legacy Institute has uh, fostered, and they all have different cards. And on the back is uh, Dino's sponsor and where Dino served. So you can oh. collect these. And for a $10 donation, we'll send you one card. For a $20 donation, we'll send you two. And for a $25 donation, we'll send you three. And when you collect 10 of these cards, you can turn, you can uh, ask for a t-shirt and we'll send you one of those. So uh, just go to marshall-legacy.org and click on donate and you can enter your information in there and it goes to a really worthy cause. And would you believe 37 of our dogs have been sponsored by children, by school children? Mm -hmm. How so, exciting. So children uh, get to talk to other kids uh, that they're sponsoring, other areas, they can disseminate uh, mind detection information, how, how what ground looks suspicious and where not to go, and they get all that information, and then they can talk to the other kids and see what their, uh, however they've raised the money to help them uh, demine the area around their ho their homes build new schools, um, new playgrounds, and any kind of new infrastructure, office buildings, roads, things like that. And you can't do that until the mines are, are cleared. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. About hundreds, of, hundreds of schools uh, across the country have gotten involved uh, in our program and the children get to know the children in the mine affected country. They tell stories, uh, poems, sing songs to one another. Uh, but most importantly, they do something about an important problem. And the American, American kids uh, have just come up with all kinds of great ideas, different ways to help children, to sponsor dogs, and the children on the other end, all of the participating students in places like Afghanistan, Lebanon, Bosnia, uh, Yemen, they form a mine action club. They promote mine risk education so that other people don't get hurt. And when they find an individual in need of help, they introduce it to the American children who raise $5,000 per school to help those children, just like Grace Christian helped young Safa. Mm -hmm. Lori, what a great social studies program that would be. Can you imagine? Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. I think every school should be doing this. We imagine love to go to the able... schools. Yeah. We grill them. We give them history and geography quizzes. Yeah. And uh, we tell them, hey, the country's from A to Z, literally. I mean, we start with... We start with in the A's with Afghanistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and we work our way to disease. And you got two Zimbabwe, <laughs> Zimbabwe and Zambia, yes, mm -hmm. who uh, who suffer with my problem, and every country in between. Oh, that was great. Yeah, and Harry goes out and does a great presentation to the children about the dogs with the dog, and shows them exactly how the dog works and. And it's just a great thing to be involved in. And we hope that you'll support the Marshall Legacy Institute. Yes, children supporting children with the help of dogs. I love it. Yeah, kids and animals. <laughs> children, so. help, children helping children. And hey, one, one dog at a time. And mm -hmm. uh, the kids have just been uh, amazing in the work that they've done. In any, in any school, uh, any, any individual, any church uh, who sponsors one of these dogs, we invite a leader of that group to go with us to see their dog in action. And we've taken many student leaders uh, with us uh, to see their dogs and to meet the survivors that they've helped in countries like uh, Bosnia, Lebanon, Sri Lanka, 
we've taken American students with us and have been great experiences for them as well as for us. Well, Colonel Perry, uh, Baltimore, we would love to thank you and Dino for mm -hmm. being with us today. This has, been, uh, this has been a great show, great education. And I know that when we share this all over social media, you know, the children are going to love it too because children and dogs go together like peanut and butter. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone, for being with you. us tonight. Lori? Thank you so much. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see the video that we have, we were going to uh, show it on the show, but we don't have time. But if you want to go to Wicked Housewives on Cape Cod, YouTube, just go to YouTube and put in Wicked Housewives on Cape Cod. That video is there for the Champs program if you want to see a little more about what it's about and how great it is for the kids. So thanks for being with us. And uh, we hope you'll uh, consider the Marshall Legacy Institute. Good night, everyone. Great. Thank Good you night. for the opportunity.